Hello and welcome to the 2021 FIA European Truck Racing Championship. Yes, we are back at the Hungaro Ring, located northeast of Budapest, Hungary, and a warm welcome to you all watching us right now. I'm very happy to present to you the most exciting truck series, the truck racing competition, and you hear it in the back. They're finally back on the grid ahead of the first qualification. Seven race weekends are scheduled and we're about to start here at the Hungaro Ring. We didn't have a champion in 2020, of course, due to the pandemic and with the last race at Misano cancelled. So six times titleist Jochen Hahn still carries the number one on his Iveco and will be able to achieve a seventh title, we will see. We do have 50 entries, great competition at all. And this is the first welcome of Norbert Kisch, the local hero driving for the Hungarian team called Reves. This is your hometown country, lots of pressure on you. And uh, you've got a, yeah, I think so, you said yourself. <laughs> but you've got a happy face, I see right now. Yeah, it's, um, it's the result that we were hoping for and that the result that we were working for. So I'm really happy for the team that here we are again and, uh, and on pole position, of course. It's still not a done deal because the points are being taken on the race. So, you know, I still have to do two good races today. But yeah, so far so good, we are happy. Thank you very much and you heard the horn. So it is time right now for the Ford to drive away and the pace truck is going on the round. So this is your turn right now, Chess. Round one of the 2021 FIA European Truck Racing Championship promised to be a hard-fought affair. We started off at the Hungaro Ring with Norbert Kisch on pole position, the hometown hero looking to get his very first win of the season to start his campaign off in the best way possible. He started alongside the number 30 of Sasha Lenz, who kept him honest all the way down towards turn one. But it was the number 11 machine of Andre Kurzim chucking it up the inside, running into the back of René Reiner as they got onto the apex of the corner, unfortunately then ruining the start of Teo Calve, who ran wide with him all the way over to the left-hand side and barely made it back onto the track without contact. As you can see down the inside, the white and yellow number 11 machine smashed into the right rear of René Reiner, who would carry a puncture throughout the rest of the race, but still finish nice and strong. It was then up to Jochen Hahn and Adam Lachko to give us a lot of the action. Lachko with this humongous lockup down the inside after losing part of the bodywork on the right-hand side of the truck. A little bit of contact to thank for that one with Jochen Hahn. Steffi Halm almost coming a cropper with damage as well as Lachko's truck managed to detach itself from the bodywork. But the huge lockup not helping that front left tyre of Lachko. Whether he could regain the pace or even regain the place would be a question for later on. But it was lap three when the main change in the race occurred. A problem for Norbert Kish, later diagnosed as a faulty boost pipe, would mean that Sasha Lenz would take the race lead in the number 30 machine and fly away off into the distance. Norbert Kish would then start losing more and more positions as the lap went on. He said he was hoping for a miracle to happen and for the problem to fix itself, but that miracle never came. A retirement then in the very first round of the season for Norbert Kish in front of a home crowd and a very, very disappointed team. This then left Sasha Lenz to take the lead and as mentioned, pull very, very far in front. A gap at the end of almost 10 seconds to the less rest of the field. Every single lap, Lenz was opening up the gap by about a second each time, consistently faster than Jochen Hahn. O'Rourke would be the third and final retirement of the race after Andre Kurzim came in a little bit earlier. But it was down to Sasha Lenz to take the first win of the championship in the number 30 machine really setting the benchmark for what was to come. Jochen Hahn then finished in second place 
with Adam Lachko's Freightliner in third place in the number 55 machine. Sasha Lenz would then celebrate with the team a little sigh of relief after waiting so long for the first race of the season. But all of that waiting had been made very much worth it for the man driver. Jochen Hahn started his championship well in front of a brilliant crowd here at the Hungara ring with a second place. Lachko happy to grab third. The three of them celebrating on the podium with their trophies and champagne to go with it as well. But a very, very happy Sasha Lenz after such a dominant performance and such a humongous gap at the end. There is the official result. Jochen Hahn second, Lachko third ahead of Alba Thetti and Steffi Halm. Jamie Anderson started 11th and finished 6th ahead of Stefan Fass, Shane Brereton, Rennie Reiner and Theo Calve. We'll be back though for race 2 and race 3, followed by race 4 across Saturday and Sunday. Yes, we saw you very happy. It was a very interesting race, of course, with uh, Norbert Kirsch running out. But it doesn't matter for you at all because you're the winner. What are your first thoughts? Yeah, I'm really happy. You know, it's uh, we wait now. I don't know eight months for the first race. Now we 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 can uh, drive and uh, first race to win in the championship. It's really nice. Welcome to the Ungaro Ring. The new season has started. We are back with the FIA ETRC Championship. The first race is done and right now we get a little bit break before the race second is going to start and we've got an interview going on. So the new Iveco S where NP pace truck is really a beauty, let's say, the new airbrush design. Frank, uh, vom Design gefällt er dir auch? Ja, natürlich, vor allen Dingen hochwertig lackiert, nicht nur foliert, sondern wirklich mit Airbrush uh, versehen und klarlack. He repeated it as I said, it's a new airbrush uh, design and on the inside it's hand stitched. It's, also im Inneren sieht es auch ganz schön aus, alles handgefertigt, handgemacht. Handgenäht, zweifarbiges Velourleder, Velourlederlenkrad, also wirklich sehr hochwertig. To color leather of Veldur, that's really, really great. And what does he got on the track? Also, was bringt er denn auf die Straße? Ja, es ist ein ganz normaler Serientrack, also bei 90 km/h abgeregelt. Da geht leider nichts anderes. Er wird auf der, Achse, auf, der, auf der eigenen Achse überführt zu jedem Rennen. Deswegen muss man sich halt an die Regeln halten. Ist aber für unsere Zwecke ausreichend. It's locked down at 19 km per hour for sure, due to safety reasons, locked down on the axle, he said. That's normal for a pace truck, because Frank, as you see, is on his overall and he is on duty. Now, what do you get after an exciting race one? An exciting race two with the reverse grid in front of all the drivers. They had to make a very, very quick effort to gain some positions. But unfortunately, Antonio Albathetti tried a little bit too hard to gain said positions. A monster of a lockup into turn one, meaning he ran into the back of Stefan Fass, who then got collected by multiple other drivers. Teo Calve had a wonderful start, though. Tenth to second in just one corner, although Lachko would have him back after this. The entire field then had a big fight down to turn two. Albuchete then coming under attack from Jochen Hahn down the inside with yet more contact and more damage to the front right of Hahn and the left rear of Albuchete. But the main incident in the race which would bring out the red flag was this humongous hit for Stefan Fass. A brake failure to blame for the truck going straight on. This was his view from the very start. Deep into turn one, getting clipped by Albuchete and then turned in front of the pack. Luckily not collected by anybody else. Fantastic avoidance from all of the drivers around him to make sure there was not further contact. All fired up though, Fast got going once again. And ran down the hill towards turn two, checking whether anything was wrong with the truck. 
and he would soon find out that yes, there was. Unfortunately, it wouldn't turn in for turn two and he went straight on into the barrier and even some of the best Armco barriers in the world could not stand the power of the five ton truck. But Stefan Fass was completely fine. He jumped out as quickly as he could and was reunited with family and everybody else in the paddock that needed to check that he was okay. And the medics did a wonderful job of ensuring that. So the race was very quickly red flagged while the barrier repair took place and everybody was set to go for a restart. The barrier repair though did take a lot longer than planned and the organizers were not confident that the race could be started safely again in a decent time frame to get things going. So unfortunately the race was cancelled, the result will be deleted and everybody will be back tomorrow for races three and four. But we thank all the marshals, all of the officials and everybody involved and hopefully we get more fantastic racing again tomorrow. Natürlich sieht es jetzt heftiger aus. Also für mich selber hat es sich sehr soft angefühlt. Ich darf es nicht sagen, aber es ist leider so. Ähm, es sieht schlimm, wirklich schlimmer aus, als dass es war jetzt für mich. Ich hoffe, an meinem Trag ist nicht allzu viel kaputt und ich kann das recht schnell jetzt wieder instand setzen, dass wir morgen wieder voll angreifen können. Ja. Thank you very much and I will have the translation for you guys so as you see thumbs up and he just uh, had a resume of what what ha happened maybe he got a little bit uh, hit on the right side so his suggestion is that might be some of the air tanks uh, got a crash and uh, he tried to check everything but the truck didn't say anything at all so all the you know the numbers were correctly and everything was fine but then suddenly downhill he couldn't stop uh, the truck so he knew he just uh, had to crash into the wall and luckily, and he was saying, oh, I might, might not say this, but for us, it's very good hearing. It was kind of a soft crash. And this is the best news of the day today that we uh, say that everything is fine with Stefan Fass. And we see him now at uh, the reunion with his family. And that's the best news for today. Day two at the Ongaro Ring of the first race weekend for the FIA European Truck Racing Championship. As you see, the conditions are very well, 23 degrees, a bit windy, you can see that. And we're happy to be back on the grid. You got to see Norbert Kisch as the pole setter, the Hungarian local hero, finally back on his home circuit. can see Norbert Kirsch is ready to go and the first uh, turn we saw it was a bit tricky yesterday how are your plans to uh, you know get going on this speed up it's uh, it's not really possible to make a plan you know you just have to wait until the moment of the start see how it goes if you can make a good start and then uh, you know try to make a good turn one so uh, try to stay in front you see he's competitive and I think, Chess, that we are going to see a big duel here. So after having one of the races cancelled, unfortunately, yesterday, it was time to get Sunday underway in the best way possible. Norbert Kish and Sasha Lenz led us away for round three of the 2021 FIA European Truck Racing Championship. Sasha Lenz slightly getting his nose in front down towards turn one, but ultimately Norbert Kish would hold on to the lead. In the middle, it was Steffi Halm and Andre Kurzim that were getting all locked up on the way into turn one, this time avoiding any major contact as Elia Kolac ducked out of that one to avoid any damage to the truck. But a great start from Kish would mean no looking back from that point onwards, while everybody else jostled for position.
a little bit further down the order. Teo Calve was trying everything he could to get past Rene Reinhardt, even shedding a lot of pieces of the truck along the way, definitely using the front end. Alia Koloch got past Hecke in the background at the expense of one of the uh, track limits bollards. But Teo Calve using up all of the front end of his truck to try everything he could to get past the number 77 machine. He would do that in the end. But Quiche and Lenz both disappeared off into the distance ahead of Adam Lachko. The battles were all starting behind, though. Jochen Hahn with Shane Brereton and, of course, Andre Kurzim in hot pursuit all the way through. Brereton even shedding parts of his own along the way. But nobody could get near Norbert Kiesch. A home race and a home victory to start his wonderful Sunday afternoon from pole position. Sasha Lenz would then come home in second place with Lachko third. And Hahn, reigning champion, would just hold on ahead of Shane Brereton and Andre Kurzim. Although Shane would try everything he could in the last corner, a little bit of a push and a side-by-side -side finish as they went for the line. Great stuff to watch. But the home fans were applauding their man, Norbert Kiesch, who took his first win of the campaign. Much deserved after all of the hard work he put into qualifying and practice and every single session leading up to now. Second place went the way of Sasha Lenz after another very solid performance with Adam Lachko, the top freight liner, in third. But Norbert Kish, very, very happy indeed to collect his first first place trophy of the season. Lachko gains his second podium of the weekend and his second third place finish in a row. But Antonio Albacete was best of the rest ahead of Shane Brereton, who would be classified ahead of Jochen Hahn after a penalty. Teo Calve would be classified ahead of Steffi Halm after her penalty as well, with Kursim in ninth ahead of Stefan Fast 10th. Then it's René Reiner, Alia Kolac, Heinrich Clemens Hecker and Thomas O'Rourke would be two laps down and unfortunately not take part in the final race of the day. But the fourth round of the championship was coming right up. First win this weekend, and I think as our commentator Chaz was saying, there was a smooth ride at the end. You up in front. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm really happy for the for the team and for the victory. That that you know finally we, we achieved this this uh, you know stepstone. Let's 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 say it that we really want to achieve yesterday. But yeah, you know it's never easy. It's never easy. It was a, it was a very hard race because Sasha was very fast in the first couple of laps. The, the start was really tight again with him. It was a little bit better for me than than, uh, than yesterday, so it was a little bit more safe um, to go in front. Uh, but then Sasha was really really close for many laps, and um, yeah, I think toward the middle of the race and the second half of the race I could pull away a little bit. So yeah, you know I'm happy because uh, yeah this is what we worked for. So I'm really happy that we are here. Back on the grid ahead of race four this first weekend at the Ungaro Ring of the FIA ETRC Championship. And I hope, Chess, that you are in your seat at the pole position. After a fantastic first home win for Norbert Kish, he needed to try and get the job done in the final race of the weekend. Teo Calve would start on pole position alongside Steffi Halm, but with Shane Brereton and Jochen Hahn behind, they had a lot of work to do in holding them back. But a great start by Norbert Kish would see him go around the outside of a number of trucks into turn one and gain a couple of all important positions in his big charge through to the front of the pack. Steffi Halm and Teo Calve would remain side by side all the way up to turn two, where Steffi would take the lead. 
Matteo Calve would then have to embark on a real defensive mission over the course of the rest of the race. But it wouldn't be long before Norbert Kiesch would go down the inside and up into fourth place. Calve would then have to focus on everybody else behind him, including Hahn, Albertete, and of course this man, Sasha Lenz. But Kiesch got through very quickly on Shane Breerton up into third and would soon go chasing down the leaders, Halm and Lachko. And it wouldn't be too long before he got past the latter. Lachko overtaken into turn one, with Kish getting a great run out of the first corner to then be ahead before they even got to turn two. He was on a real charge through the pack, aiming to get that second win of the day in front of his home crowd. And it would only be one lap later where he would take the lead. Steffi Halm had been getting the cheers of the crowd all day, but their home man would be the one to cheer for now he got into the lead. Lachko was trying everything as well to go with him to make sure he wasn't in third place for the third time this weekend. And soon himself and Steffi Halm would have an epic battle to always remember. Lachko really threw everything at Steffi Halm in the IV coat, but she would hold on very, very strongly indeed. A bit of contact did not go amiss though, but she said it's just part of motorsport and she thoroughly enjoyed the fight with the Czech driver. Once again this weekend, proving that these trucks are very, very sturdy despite the bodywork that comes off. But Norbert Kiesch was absolutely over the moon and so were the fans as he took his second win of the day from Steffi Halm, Adam Lachko, Shane Brayton won the Goodyear Cup for the second time today. Jochen Hahn and Sasha Lenz rounded out a very, very strong top six. But Kiesch was just as pleased as all of his fans that were watching and he wanted to make sure that he celebrated his race win in the best way possible. Donuts are plenty for your double race winner today. It's a good thing those uh, good years didn't need to do another race after this one. But a very, very well-deserved win after taking pole position in Super Bowl, winning the first race from the front and then coming through from eighth on the grid to take the second one of the weekend. Norbert Kish was very pleased to be able to celebrate with his team and his fans after what was a very difficult day yesterday. So there's your result then. Kish from Harm and Lachko, Brayton, Hahn and Lenz. Theo Calve ended up seventh ahead of Kurzim, Albathete and Stefan Fass, who rounded out the top 10 in his Scania after a very, very tough fight in the mid-pack. There were so many of them very close together all the way through. René Reiner, Elia Koloch, and of course, Henrik Clemens Hecker at the back of the field there. But that was all from the Hungara Ring. Three phenomenal races, one that got cancelled, and we'll hopefully see you all again soon at the Nürburgring in the middle of July. So that was a quite an interesting uh, uh, race and we saw you there fighting really hard for the first position. The fans cheering up, shouting Norby, Norby. How did you manage to get in front? Oh, it was great. Um, I tried to be... Uh, you know, my only aim is just to overtake Sasha, which worked out at the start, but then I could see that I'm, I'm much faster than, than the others and I... And I, and I knew I, that I just need a little patience, you know, not to do it, not to try to do it in the first two laps or three laps or four laps or whatever, just to wait it out. And, pe and eventually people will mistakes, their tires will drop, which happened. I mean, <laughs> I mean, I'm so sorry for Steffi, but she had so much understeer, she barely could make the turns. So, yeah, I just had to wait it out until, until I have an opportunity to, you know, to go there and make an overtake, you know, clean. Um, sometimes I was pushed wide out of the circuit, which I got some penalties for, or, you know, not penalties, warnings, warnings. Um, but, you know, it worked out in the end, so I'm really happy to finish him first. So we're finally back 
at the UTRC Championship. It is very good to see you all there. So please join us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Check us out and then we will see you soon in July at the Nürburgring. That was it from the Ungaro Ring. The music has stopped. The podium is empty, but we are full of joy. Thank you very much for joining us.